Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is just me stalling because I don't know how to work my video narration software. So if you have some recommendations, put them in the comments down below. Thanks. Hey YouTube, hey subscribers, thanks for tuning in. Let's do this video on something that narcissists love to do to their targets and their victims, and that is scare you. They really get a rise out of seeing the fear in your eyes and seeing everything that you try to do after you've been scared to either make yourself less afraid or to correct whatever it is that they've told you about uh, that's now causing fear. So allow me to share a story that happened to me the other day. I was having a discussion with a coworker and we were having a normal conversation and then out of the blue she goes, oh, I was talking to a senior leader the other day and they shared with me that you appear to have a chip on your shoulder. And my initial reaction was to pause and I kind of tilted my head to the side. And this individual, I do believe to be either a malignant narcissist or just one step below malignant. And so I thought about it and I briefly ran through my head all the interactions I've had with senior leaders lately. And I couldn't recall any that had gone poorly, at least not to me. And so I, I did the very next thing that is very natural to do, which is say, well, who? Which senior leader? What event are they referring to? So I start asking questions to try to get more information about this feedback. And she says, oh, well, you know, I'm not gonna break confidences, but that's what they shared with me. And I said, well, you're telling me this with no other details is not very helpful. And she says, well, you know, I just want you to know because they talk to each other and they share this kind of information about us amongst each other and it can affect your career. And I said, again, well, I, I certainly appreciate you telling me, but without knowledge of what's making them say that, I can't fix it. You know, is it an interaction in the hallway? Was it an interaction in a meeting? Um, was it a group outing after hours? Like, I need to know what is making them say that. So I sent her away with a task and I said, you know, if you can, if you're not willing to tell me who it was who said it, then can you at least find out what's making them say that so I can maybe work on it? Because I'm not a perfect person and who we think we are in public and how we think we're perceived is not always the case. So I'm always open to feedback and I'm open to changing those things that may be valid and rubbing people the wrong way. However, one thing you'll have to learn about narcissists is they love to scare you. They love to frighten you. And what's interesting is, you know, they, they, they like to put fear around things that you have a high degree of concern about, like your job, your livelihood, things of that nature. And if it was honest, real feedback coming from the heart with the hope for change, they would have said, listen, you know, please don't repeat this, but I was talking to senior leader XYZ the other day, and they said at the blank, you blank, and they really took that the wrong way, and they now think that you have a chip on your shoulder. So, you know, you may want to be careful about blank when you're blank, because it causes people to have a negative perception of you, and I don't want that to impact your career. That's real feedback. But to just come to someone out of the blue, and many days later, uh, it wasn't like uh, she had met with the senior leader the day before or day of. Apparently, it's something that had happened about a week, or so, a week or so ago. So to come to me many days later, you know, very vague, a senior leader said it, and they're telling other people. And I said, I, I also shared with her, I said, well, if this is a senior leader who shared this with you, I would hope that their leadership skills would kick in and they would come give me, the employee, critical feedback in order to help my career succeed, not funnel feedback through a peer. So when I started to weigh and consider all of these things, I completely rejected it outright, and I didn't lose a wink of sleep over it. In the past, if someone had come to me and told me something like that, I would have spun my wheels trying to figure out, what did I say? What did I do? When did I do it? Running back all the interactions I've had with all the different groups and trying to figure out what could have been misinterpreted. And, you know, I would have um, tried to find some kind of way to make it right with this person. Even if it wasn't like an obvious writing, I would have done something to try to 
you know, rebuild that relationship and fix it. And, oh, I would have lost so much sleep over it. Now, if a person is not willing to, if they're going to give you information and they're not willing to give you all the information, you have to consider that information invalid until you have more information. Because otherwise, as narcissists love to do, you're just going to be chasing some imaginary uh, negative feedback that doesn't exist, draining your energy, uh, draining your creativity, because you're, all your creativity is going towards fixing this imaginary problem. And all it does is throw you off track and make you anxious for no reason. So when you're dealing with a narcissist, and once you've recognized this person is a narcissist, take note of the fact that they love to do this to you. And I'm sure it comes in many other forms, um, but they love to try to scare you in, in big and small ways. Um, I would imagine in a spousal relationship, um, if, if it's male or female, the husband or the wife, every, every so often they do or say something that has a very ominous dark cloud over it. Like, you know, with the, with the express intent of scaring you. So in my mind, it would be something like maybe a spouse comes home and says, you know, I'm in trouble at work. I think I might lose my job when really their job is fine. They're not in any trouble. They might actually be getting promotions. But what they want is for that to kickstart fear and anxiety in you. So you'll start worrying. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about the kids? What are we going to do about the bills? Am I going to have to take on a second job? They just want to see that part. They really don't care about the outcome of your actions. They want to see the wind up. They want to see the fear in your eyes. They want to see you lose the color in your face. That's what they're after. So, <laughs> and that's what my narcissist was after that particular day. And I believe after about two minutes and I realized she wasn't going to tell me anything else, I said, well, what are you having for lunch today? Because it just, to me, just didn't register anywhere. And if it is true, then I need more info and then I can take corrective steps towards that. But my reaction was completely neutral. And so that's my goal for you guys. When narcissists bring some vague, random threat or information or problem to you, and the more questions you ask, the less information you get, they're just trying to scare you. And do not give them the satisfaction of seeing you get worked up, wound up, freaked out, you know, one of the things I always talk about in my videos is staying calm when you're with these people, keeping to the best of your ability, your emotions in check and continuously asking those open ended questions because yes, no questions. It's very easy for someone who's a manipulator to manipulate by answering yes or no. But when you ask open ended questions, it actually requires them to give a response, a list, details, more information. So you just stay calm in the moment. And who, who said that? When? Oh, your health, your, you have a serious health problem? What's going on? What doctor told you that? When are you going back for a follow-up? You know, like you have to stay calm and slowly pace the conversation. And then usually within the first couple of minutes, you'll discover that they're just trying to scare you because they didn't plan for the detail portion. They just planned for delivering that that one hitter, boom, shock and awe, and then watching you get yourself all worked up as a result of that one hitter. They're not prepared for the details though. They're not gonna put that much effort into it. Some of them will, but for the most part, narcissists are kind of mentally lazy in the sense of they don't like to really work hard in any way really. And so working hard in this situation would definitely be having all these additional details in the back of their mind ready to tell you just in case you ask. They're not set up that way, but you are. So as soon as they drop that bomb on you, you know, you respond by politely asking open-ended questions. And then one other thing I want you to consider is, have they done this to you before? And is it periodic? They usually don't do it back to back to back. It's usually spaced out a little bit. Every three months or so, every four months or so, every six months or so. It's not something that happens all of the time. So does it occur relatively infrequently? And have they done this to you before? And if so, just know that they're trying to scare you and just don't play into it. 
Um, and as a matter of fact, just keep, keep right in step as if they haven't told you a single thing, right? And always keeping in the back of your mind that real feedback, honest information is going to give you as much info as possible to help you make a better decision in the future or to help you change something that maybe you messed up in the past. So I hope this was helpful. Um, be on the lookout for those little fear tactics, those little scare tactics that they use. And <laughs> if you want to have a little fun with them, when they tell you, you know, clutch your chest and go, oh my word, you don't say, oh no, really? Be real dramatic with it and go, oh, well, it's fine. It'll work itself out. Like have a super dramatic reaction and then a completely neutral one. It'll throw them off, you know, why not? Why not have a little fun with these people, right? But thanks, you guys. Thanks always for listening. Check out the blog if you haven't had a chance. It is permission to exist at blogspot.com. And I thank you all so much. I have the best subscribers on YouTube. And I appreciate you listening. And I grant you the permission to exist. Bye-bye.